everyone welcome back to TK's Tech Talk today I'm going to be comparing two SSDs I have an NVMe SSD and a SATA SSD let's have a quick look at the SATA SSD you may have seen this in a previous video so this is a Samsung Evo 850 you can see that there a 1 TB drive so this drive is capable of about 500 megabytes per second and then we have the SN550 which is inside this enclosure and this is capable of reads, reads of 2400 megabytes per second and writes of I believe 1750 megabytes per second now obviously when we're connecting through the USB connector the maximum throughput we can get is 10 gigabits which is about 1000 megabytes per second so what I want to see is and I haven't tried this yet to be honest is to see if this drive is faster than the SATA drive so how I'm going to do that is I have lots of games stored at the moment on my SATA drive I'm going to copy one from my SATA drive onto my PlayStation 5 and see how long that takes and then I'm going to copy that game back onto the NVMe drive now if it copies faster back onto the NVMe drive considering read is generally faster than write that will mean that immediately we will know that the NVMe is faster in reading and writing than the SATA drive so let me just plug first my 1TB Samsung SSD into the PlayStation and I'll be back in a moment Okay, so I've connected my 1TB SSD back into the PlayStation. So what I'm going to do first is go into settings and just show that to you. Go to storage, extended storage, and you can see it says VLI product string. That is just the name of the enclosure that's been given. And that's what's showing at the top. That's why it says VLI product string. And you can see that it's one terabyte. So I'm going to go into games and apps. I'm going to scroll over to items you can move. I'm going to select the first game here for now, which is 24 gigabytes. Go down to move. The selected games and apps we've moved to the console storage. Click OK. And before I click OK, let's get my phone ready. So I've got my phone here. And I'm going to click start my stopwatch at the same time. So three, two, one, go. And let's see how long it takes to move. So that's 24 gigabytes at 500 megabytes per second. That should, assuming we get full throughput, it should equate to about 48 seconds. So I'm actually going to let it happen real time so you can see that I'm not cheating or anything. And I'm really interested to see how this plays out. So while this copies, it already looks like it's going to take more than 48 seconds. You can see the progress bar is nowhere near halfway yet. But while it's doing that, let's just uh, talk about something from the camera's perspective. So what you might have seen in previous videos I've been recording for my PlayStation. I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second is that the screen was flickering i couldn't really get a good screen i haven't got the best lighting in the world unfortunately i'm not a professional video recorder or anything and i've managed to change the settings on my sony a6500 to 60 fps so what happens is if you buy the camera and it's in a pal region like i am you will actually only get 50 frames per second by default however you can go into the settings it will format your memory card in case you're planning to do that and change it to 60 frames per second at that point, you have to format your memory card and you will then be able to record at 50 frames per second. So I'm now recording at full HD and 60 frames per second. So we're approaching the halfway mark and we're at 1 minute and 23 seconds. Obviously, if you're watching this live, uh, please feel free to fast forward to see what time we achieve. I think it's going to be close to three minutes. So while it's doing that, another thing I just want to point out is that with these enclosures, um, it's not necessary that you're going to get the maximum throughput. I did do a test on my PC. It gets to something like 350 or 400 megabytes per second. So that is a limitation. The cable, as far as I know, is capable of 5 gigabits, so we shouldn't have any problem getting to 500 megabytes per second. And I'm actually going to be using a 10 gigabits cable directly to the front USB-C port. And the cable I'm using is by Fastgear. I'm not sure if you can read that, but it says 5 amp 10 gigabits. So this indeed is a 10 gigabits cable. And I'll just show you the other side. It's a right angle cable, and you can see it's by Fastgear. So as we're approaching the end now, let's put the stopwatch back into the screen. I don't know how to focus both at the same time, but let's just see how much longer it takes. Okay, 
Okay, we're almost there. Stop. Oops, so two minutes and 57 seconds. Let's just say I was two seconds slow. So give me a moment. I'm going to connect my NVMe drive and we will do the test the other way around and copy that game back to the SSD from the internal storage. Back in a sec. I just thought I'd do this part live with you so when you remove the drive, don't just disconnect it. Make sure you go and take send the storage, safety remove from PS5, yes. And I can now disconnect it. So I'm just going to reconnect my other drive and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've connected my 1TB NVMe SSD to the PlayStation 5. It's asking me to format. This time you can see it says J Micron. So that is now, you can see there's a blue light flashing on there. So I've got the 10 gigabits cable connected. I'm not using the same cable just because I'm not sure if the other cable is 10 gigabits. So just to be fair and to save a lot of hassle and time and to see if the cable is 10 gigabits, I'm going to be using this cable. So let me go ahead and click format as extended storage. Click yes. That's done. So now we see USB to PCIe bridge. That's the name given to this enclosure. Has 918 gigs free as before as my one terabyte SSD the Samsung 850 Evo had. So let's now go to console storage, games and apps, items you can move. Let's go back to Crash Bandicoot and same tr trilogy. And I'm gonna click move. And before I start the move, let's get my stopwatch ready. Okay, stopwatch is ready. So let's start them at the same time. Three, two, one, go. Right, I am human after all, so um, let's just pretend that I'm 100% accurate for now. I'm not gonna be more than half a second off, so that should be fine. It's already moving a lot faster than the SATA SSD was. This is absolutely crazy. I'm gonna have to copy this back to the console just to see the speed that it reads at as well. So let's just wait for this to finish. I'm gonna move my phone so you don't get the flicker and focus happening. Already at 50%. We're approaching now 51 seconds. We're almost at the end. And we're done. One minute, 10 seconds to write it back to the NVMe drive. That is ridiculously fast. So let me reset my stopwatch. And we're now going to do a read test on the NVMe drive. So let's go back. Go to extended storage, games and apps, Crash Bandicoot Trilogy. Sorry, it's supposed to go to items you can move. Crash Bandicoot Trilogy, move. And let's get my stop push ready again. And at the same time, three, two, one, go. So for some strange reason, this is moving slower now. This is interesting. I wasn't expecting this. We already know that the PlayStation drive is a lot faster than an external drive. So why is it taking longer to move something from an external drive, which has the capability of a thousand meg per second read inside this enclosure, and it is a thousand meg per second read. Uh, you can see one of my previous videos. It's not a thousand, it's not fully a thousand meg. It's like, around 800 or 900 megabytes per second. But it's copying a lot slower. We're already at 40 seconds and we haven't even hit anywhere near 50%. I'm wondering if we're gonna end up with the same read time. Theoretically, we shouldn't. So let's see how this pans out. Now the problem with this is, does it mean that our games will necessarily load faster off the NVMe drive? It was all good and well writing to the NVMe, so it shows that the read of the PlayStation drive is definitely very fast. Well, much faster than the enclosure, but it's at least keeping up to that. 
So we're approaching this 50% mark and funnily enough, I think we're going to get a very similar time. Because again, we're coming to 1 minute 30 seconds at 50%. So it looks like we're going to be at 3 minutes. So I'm just going to stop talking for a while and let's see what happens. Of course, feel free to skip through a few seconds or a minute if you don't want to wait. I'm doing it real time just to show that there's no cheating or anything like that going on. While it's happening, it's writing away. Oh, heating up nicely. Two minutes fifteen. Okay, so we're approaching the end. And it's taken a few seconds longer. We can assume that they're the same. So essentially what we're getting is more or less the same read speed. I, I really can't understand that. If anybody knows why, please let me know in the comments below. But this is something that doesn't really make sense. So we have one last test to do now. And that is to test the write speed of the 1TB Samsung SSD. So that's this drive here. I'm gonna reconnect this and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so the 1TB drive is back in. You can see the product string now says VLI product string. And I'm gonna go to my console storage, games and apps, items you can move, Crash Bandicoot. So I'm always using the same file just to make sure that we have a very fair test. So I'm back to my original configuration. One thing I want to point out here is that because the SSD is quite full, we may experience a slightly slower write time, but let's just quickly do that and see what happens. So let's get ready with the stopwatch. Three, two, one, go. Pretty accurate, I think. And again, it's moving pretty quickly. It looks like it's going almost as fast as the NVMe drive. So let's do a quick calculation while it's doing that. We have 24 gigabytes. 24 gigabytes at one gigabyte per second would be 24 seconds. At 500 megabytes per second would be 48 seconds. So one minute would, be, would mean we're theoretically hitting the maximum of 500 megabytes or 400 megabytes per second or whatever it is that the PlayStation is allowing the read at, and also what the enclosure is allowing the read at. Uh, we are actually already falling behind. We've now approached 59 seconds. So we've hit 1 minute and 34 seconds. So that is definitely slower. So one more time, 1 minute 34 seconds. So we're definitely slower than the NVMe drive. Now, the only reason I can think of for that is that the enclosure is not capable of the maximum speeds for the 850 EVO. This means is that essentially, whether you have a normal SATA enclosure 
or whether you have a SATA SSD or one that's capable of 500 megabytes per second, something like the SanDisk, 500 megabytes per second, the small SSDs, they're gonna be the same as this because we are not getting the throughput that we're expecting from the 10 gigabits connector. Now that's probably okay because at the end of the day, if you're coming from PlayStation 4, these speeds are definitely a massive improvement over what we could attain on the PS4. So with all that said, I wouldn't bother wasting your time and money buying a more expensive 1000 megabyte drive unless you plan to have other uses for it, which you can't really do if you're gonna use it for your PS5 anyway because it will be either formatted for PS5 or formatted for a PC or a MacBook or whatever you're gonna use it for. So I would definitely recommend probably considering a standard 500 megabytes per second drive. Don't bother with an NVMe. And it will be interesting to see how fast the NVMEs are once we're allowed to put them inside the PlayStation 5. I know we're currently limited to the, I think it's the Samsung 980 Pro and the WD SN850 or something like that. There's another drive by Western Digital which apparently will also be supported by the PlayStation 5, only time will tell, and they're also not as fast as the PlayStation 5 SSDs. So that's it for this video. Please feel free to like and subscribe, and feel free to ask any questions that you may have. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.